Okay, 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 okay. I am feeling so autumnal today. I have this new tea which tastes like cinnamon and apple porridge, like the Quaker Oats one. Today we are here to talk about transitional skincare. Which is something I have a lot of trouble with because I don't know about you, but when the seasons change, my skin goes mad. It's obviously not like 1st of September, bam, skin is gone. It's not like that. It's that when the seasons are changing around, you know, it's getting suddenly colder or suddenly warmer, let's say summer to autumn transition or winter through to spring summer transition, my skin just stops working. <laughs> my skin will go really dry in places, really oily in places, really spotty in places. I get bumps all across my forehead. My skin just goes a bit wild. And so I spent the past couple of years trying to work out why this is happening and how I can resolve it with some friendly products. So today I'm going to talk you through some of the products I've discovered that have helped my skin and also the methods that have helped my skin when this seasonal change comes through. I'm going to show you some products that have helped me. However, I am a strong believer that skincare does not have to break the bank. So if you can't find a product or can't afford a product that's exactly like the one I've got, I'm 100% that you can find a cheaper alternative and I'll try and suggest the ingredients within the products that will help you find the cheaper alternative. However, of course, these are a whole spectrum, so there are some on the more affordable end and some on the high end. So let's start with the cleanse. When it comes to cleansing, the more gentle, the better. Even the products like Milky Jelly Cleanser by Glossier, my skin just can't really handle that, it's too drying. So I have to be extra gentle. So I start by removing my makeup with a creamy balm-based cleanser. This is one I would really, really recommend. It is the Body Shop Chamomile one. I don't know what the base is, but I suspect it's coconut oil. It's very, very gentle. It's very affordable as well, and it helps you remove your products really, really nicely. I take a little bit in my hand, I then rub it all over my face, and then I use a wet, damp, clean washcloth to wipe it all off. Any balm cleanser will be gentle enough on the skin and remove your makeup really well, but I think this one is just so good. So I think the cleansing balm's great for makeup removing, and some people might find that that's all they really want to do, whereas I like to do a second cleanse, which is slightly deeper, and actually removes like the pollution and grime of London off my face. It's gonna be like in the sun in a sec, so let me be quick about this. So I suggest two options for this. First is the Lizelle Cleanse and Polish. This is my jam. I've been using this for years. It helps me with all sorts of skin problems and is so gentle and so easy going on my skin. If you need a slightly deeper cleanse, I would really recommend the, I think it's CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser. So it's still quite gentle, but again, it's this affordable, very simple and basic cleanser that's perfect for when your skin is really irritated and really doesn't need much product on it right now. You just want to remove your makeup, easy peasy lemon squeezy, this is a great option. Now let's go to toner. I wasn't a convert of toners until about four months ago, but I'm a really big fan now. They are so good for adding extra hydration without it being uh, an oil-based step, basically. And the one I'd recommend this time around is the Rose and Hibiscus Herbivore Coconut Water Hydrating Face Mist because it's not as harsh as a full rose water, but it still has the benefits because it's got some rose water in it, but it has coconut as well, so it's much more gentle. And coconut, as we know, is incredibly hydrating, so that's really good. I've been using this for about three months now, biggest fan. Let's talk problem skin. So let's say your skin is breaking out like mine. I've never found a really, really effective spot cream specifically, but when I get spots, I always use the Glossier Super Pure Serum. It's niacinamide and zinc. I believe you can get a very similar one from The Ordinary if it's still available. Who knows what's going on with The Ordinary? Not me, but if it is, I'll link it below. So I dot this after I cleanse my skin just all across the bits that need clearing from spots. And then in the morning, it is so much better. Honestly, it's like my miracle potion. Now, if you're like me and you have incredibly dry spots, you might want to consider using an oil or a serum. For me, I go for oils because I think they're more saturating into the skin and I can place them quite specifically so that they actually penetrate the areas they're most needed in. So I'm gonna recommend two today. First of all is the Daily Glow by Neighborhood Botanicals. This is so good. I've been using this every day for maybe three or four months. I'm absolutely converted. It's one of the first oils that hasn't broken me out and I use it morning and night and it just has improved the quality of my skin. It makes me feel so much more hydrated and it really, really helps me avoid the dry patches. I tend to get dry around here and it just doesn't really appear when I use this morning and night. The other oil I'd recommend is a rosehip oil. I use this pie oil. I love this brand so much. They're natural skincare, all cruelty free, as are all of these products, by the way, as per everything's cruelty free. 
But yeah, I love pie rosehip oil. It's incredible. Rosehip's really good for if you have redness, discoloration, you want to even out scars, and if you have acne as well. Now, let's talk about moisturizer. I would go with the plainest moisturizer you can find, and I tend to be drawn to the Body Shop Aloe range just because it is so simple, so basic. Body Shop have sensitive skincare down to a T. So this is the night cream. I also use the daily moisturizer with SPF 15 when I'm having a bad, flare up. So it's formulated for sensitive skin and it is moisturizing without adding too much oil back in or too much other stuff. I really, really love it. Unscented. I'm pretty sure it's vegan as well. Yes, 100% vegan. So it's very plain, very simple, but also very effective. So it's very plain, very simple, but also creates a very effective barrier and protects your skin from all the things that are making it really difficult, like all the cold wind and harsh weather. Also for something more moisturizing and nourishing, I'm just such a fan of the Glossier Priming Rich Moisturizer. Priming Rich Moisturizer? Sure. It's a great nighttime cream. It smells like lavender. It's got the thingy on it, by the way, <laughs> but I can smell it through that. I get through these so fast. These are my ride or die, but it is very lavender scented. It does have a fair bit of lavender oil in, I suspect, so if you think that might irritate your skin, maybe give this a miss. Aloe vera moisturizing night cream, it's the tits. And finally, let's talk about masks. For really problem skin, I go for a really easy mask once a week when it's really, really bad. And believe me, things can get really, really bad. This is the Moisturizing Moon Mask, my namesake. It is this real jellied, Jelly, jelly plasticine mask. It's got hyaluronic acid. It's moisturizing without adding loads of excess oil. And I find it so, so soothing if I have really irritated patches. It also doesn't seem to break me out. So I would really recommend this whether you use it on patches of your skin or all over your face. And finally, let's talk about lips because my lips are horrible as soon as the cold weather comes in. I'm sure you're exactly the same. Mine are like chapped, like really dry, wrinkly. So let me show you what I use. There is a science to lip care, and that is two types of product. There's one type of product that is the barrier base, which is often used in things like Vaseline, Carmex, that kind of barrier version of lip balm that a lot of people know and love. However, that kind doesn't nourish the lips. It will just stop them getting worse and create the barrier for like, let's say there's loads of wind, it'll protect them from that. So that's really good, but it's not a preventative measure. This stuff, actually helps. <laughs> There's a second kind of lip balm which this one falls into. This is the pure papaya care papaya lips. The second category actually moisturizes your lips. I found a couple of really good ones. I'm currently using this one. I'll link some below. But they tend to have, if you look at the ingredients of this, it is shea butter, academia seed oils, all seed oils. It's papaya fruit extract. Eventually right at the bottom it's wax and gum. So it's full of oil basically. It's really good for you. So when it comes to lips I have a two-part procedure. And the first step is one of these moisturizing lip balms. I believe the EOS ones are quite similar in terms of mainly being this kind of oil-based thing. After this one's sunk in, I will use a second layer, which will be one of these emollient ones that's kind of like a Vaseline or a Carmex. I use the Glossier uh, Balm.com. Those ones that are like this thicker marine solve thing. So it seems that this line has somehow vanished, which is great news, but also, we finished the skincare stuff. I hope this proves useful to someone, at least one person, that would be great. The main thing I'd recommend is just keep it simple. As simple as possible, simple ingredients. Don't worry too much about putting loads of nutrients into your skin at this point in time. You just need to make sure it's not breaking down any further. At least now, there are so many options available to people, especially cruelty-free people when it comes to skincare. So I hope I've been at least a little bit of help for you. So yeah, thank you so much. I will see you in my next video.